Far from the city, amongst her horses, Kathy Hubble feels she can finally relax. Oh. Even if only for a moment. I now move to the country where life is so much less stressful. I have to be in a low stress environment where I can be with my animals and my horses and my partner. Hey, gorgeous boy. After cosmetic surgery with Dr. Ryan Wells and his then boss, the scandal played Dr. Daniel Lanza. She was left with lifelong scars. I've now got chronic pain in my abdomen and it's like thousands of red ants biting under the skin. <laughs> Dr. Wells tried to distance himself from Daniel Lanza. And in November last year, he and his nurses posed for photos as they scraped Lanza's name from the clinic's window. Last month, he rebranded the business. But for patients like Kathy Hubble, this is nothing more than slick marketing. How important is it for you to speak up about Dr Wells? Dr Wells has actually now distanced himself from Dr Lanza, right, so and yet he is probably the, the worst right, culprit so in the procedure that was done on me, and he is still practising. This person is barbaric. He needs to be stopped. Just like Dr Wells, Cosmos Clinic's Dr Reza Ahmadi was a prolific user of social media, sharing before and after surgery photos on expiring Instagram stories. But many of the posts forgot to mention the risks. Regulation of the cosmetic surgery industry is almost non-existent. It's just full of holes. And for patients, um, they are not safe. So who's going to protect you? No one. Basically, it's buyer beware, you're on your own. Did you do this procedure inside a registered healthcare facility? Dr Margaret okay, Foe so is a lawyer well. and expert on Australia's complex healthcare system. One of the areas that needs close scrutiny and attention, in my opinion, is this um, practice of paying influencers and or giving them free cosmetic surgery so that they promote that surgery because they are influencers. To my mind, that is something that should be, we should be looking at criminalising. In January this year, Dr Reza's details disappeared from the Cosmos website. Welcome to the DM of the week. And his social media appeared to be professionally wiped from the internet. Keisha Amoa and other patients were never told where he'd gone or why. They basically wouldn't tell me much because I assumed that they can't. But I'm definitely not the only person that this has happened to and I'm definitely not going to be the last. When Dr Reza operated on Keisha, it was a disaster. So we're doing really well. Everything's really settling down well. We've got a little bit of fluid here. Just to speak. Last December, she booked in with How leading plastic really surgeon, really Professor really Mark really Ashton, to so fix her scarred body. And today, she's meeting him for a checkup following revision surgery to remove painful scar tissue. And when we looked and found out where that scar tissue was, what we found is it was just, as you can see here, just a dense block of very thick scar tissue. This is the amount of scar tissue removed from Keisha's abdomen caused by liposuction by Dr Reza. So is that almost the size of a palm? About the size of the palm of your hand. Um, I've never seen it before. The medical report from the hospital says Keisha's liver was lacerated multiple times from liposuction. With Keisha, what happened was he went too deep because he was unaware as where that cannula was positioned. He was unaware he was too deep and he started liposucking Keisha's liver. It's worse than the Wild West 
The Wild West, at least you knew you were going into an environment which was dangerous. We meet again, Dr. Reza. Professor Ashton says after seeing Keisha in December last year, he had a mandatory obligation to report Dr. Reza to the National Health Regulator, APRA. Early last month, it banned Dr. Reza from all cosmetic surgery, but allowed him to work as a GP. But that's not enough for Dr. Foe. If the conditions on Dr. Reza aren't appropriate, what is appropriate? I would think um, suspend his registration. Perhaps not indefinitely, but suspend his registration. I'm not seeing um, that they even really understand the magnitude of what they're dealing with. We tracked down Dr Reza to this no frills GP clinic on the outskirts of Melbourne. Until conditions were placed on him, the clinic was offering cosmetic appointments with the now fallen doctor. We approached the founder of Cosmos, Dr Joseph Ajaka, for comment in the days before this story was originally due to be broadcast back in May. However, Dr Ajaka rushed off to court to stop the show. Abigail Boyd. It was an action that outraged New South Wales MP Abigail Boyd. Last Friday, 13th of May, the New South Wales Supreme Court issued an extraordinary order granting Double Bay cosmetic surgeon Dr Joseph Ajaka of Cosmos Clinics access to draft pre-publication copies of an upcoming 60 Minutes episode. This court order is unprecedented. Around the same time, Cosmos was busy deleting more than 100 posts from its social media accounts. But we've got them all. The Batman videos and dancing in the operating theatre are now gone. So too has the Putin horror show. Other, more risque posts have also been wiped from their accounts. Trick or treat. Our gorgeous client of Cosmos is definitely looking like a treat. As has the video of Dr. Ajaka performing liposuction while looking at the camera instead of the patient. Who is this Joseph Ajaka who has the means and the incentives to attack so aggressively one of the pillars of our democracy in the defence of his private financial and reputational interests? What guilty conscience has now prompted this defensive posture? Ajaka may have a lot to lose if he can't control what is said about him, but we all have a lot more to lose if journalists are prevented from speaking truth to power. Patients like Keisha Omoa have a lot to lose too. The risks of speaking out are enormous. But she's adamant that no other cosmetic patient suffers at the hands of an unqualified surgeon. By coming forward, I'm hoping that other women and people who have had surgery are able to share their stories as well and not feel like they need to be embarrassed or ashamed. And that's the reason why I'm speaking out, because I don't want anyone to die.